What's up guys? Uh, welcome back to another episode of Quarantine Coffee and Jesus. This week we are kicking off a new series uh, about the spiritual disciplines. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what spiritual disciplines are, you aren't alone. Basically, spiritual disciplines are practices, habits, or exercises uh, that you put in place to develop a stronger spiritual life. Um, think of it as like spiritual weightlifting, right? So with physical exercise, you have cardio, weight training, plyometrics, agility, all the things. There's a ton of uh, different exercises you can do, which all work different target areas of your physical health. So in the same way, as spiritual disciplines um, target, target different areas of your spiritual development, depending on what your goals are. So that's kind of in a nutshell what spiritual disciplines are. They help to develop and strengthen your spiritual life and connection with Jesus. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the spiritual discipline of silence. And that's the talk. Thank you. I'm just kidding. Uh, that was terrible, right? That was so awkward and uncomfortable. Um, and that was like, I think five seconds at the most. Um, and as uncomfortable and awkward as those 10 seconds or five seconds were, that's literally how I feel about any silence in general. I hate silence. Like I hate silence when I'm alone and I hate awkward silence, like among a group of, of people or friends. I hate it so much that um, I fall asleep with the TV on every single night. Otherwise, the like silence and barrage of thoughts that finally have time to fill my mind is overwhelming. Like it's too much. I did that a couple weeks ago and I never fell asleep because uh, I'm so used to having the t <coughs> TV on. Uh, there's always music or TV on at all times in my world. Uh, when I'm driving or at home or at work, I, I gotta have music or something on. So then this one time my husband got a Groupon for those like sensory deprivation tanks or float tanks as they're called sometimes. So you basically get into this like egg shaped chamber and you get in and there's like salt water in there and you lay down and they close it and there is, it's completely pitch black. There's no sound, there's no smell, there's no, I mean you can barely move in there you are supposed to stay in there for like 45 minutes. I lasted 15 minutes, I think. Um, I jumped out, like I couldn't take any more. I jumped out and I sat in like the private waiting room that everyone, each person gets for like the next half hour pretending that I was still in the egg. And I, when I was in there, I just laid there like, what am I supposed to do now? With the like operative word being do, like what am I supposed to do now? It was torture for me to lay there with no agenda, with no script, uh, with no checklist or like expectations of um, what I was supposed to be like getting out of that time of silence. Like what was supposed to come out of this? And I had no idea, they don't really tell you. Uh, and I'll be honest, like the only thing that I got out of that time, out of that 15 minutes, uh, was realizing that I hated it. Like I hated the silence. Um, so, Let's start by looking at what this discipline is calling us to do. So in the spiritual sense, this practice of silence is the absence of all human created stimuli. So if you're going to practice this and you went out on a walk and a bird chirped, like you're okay, you didn't break the silence, you don't have to start over. Um, but you do have to detach from all human related or created noise. Uh, even including like written words such as books or the Bible or text messages, anything um, that you have to like listen to technically. Uh, it also includes quieting yourself, so not talking or speaking during that time. And this discipline has been promoted and practiced by big, biblical figures such as Moses and John the Baptist. Um, they both had times of silence as they prepared. It's my dog. She's back. She knocked my phone down uh, as they prepared for their ministry calling. And Jesus himself spent 40 years, 40 years, 40 days in silence. Um, 
and solitude before he began his ministry. And then famous poets and philosophers frequently encouraged and practiced silence that led to the creation of some of their like most renowned and famous works. Um, and then I read that people like Abe Lincoln and uh, Ulysses S. Grant and Theodore Roosevelt, they all used silence uh, and employed that during uh, some of their like biggest history making decisions that they had to, to make. So that leads to this question. Uh, what is so special and so powerful about silence? Like why do we need it and what are the benefits? Uh, so let's just talk about some of those. Silence increases your ability to hear God's voice in your own voice. So I think we can all agree that this world is crazy loud, right? It's full of noise uh, between Facebook and Instagram and whatever the heck TikTok is. I still haven't figured that one out. Uh, and podcasts and Netflix and Spotify. It's like we constantly have noise and stimuli coming at us uh, and it's at our fingertips. Yet we were created, like as God's creation, we were meant to be in tune with the voice of Jesus. Um, and so many of us say like, I just need Jesus to tell me what to do. Or like, why won't he answer me when I pray? And yet I don't think that we always give him the space and time and, and quiet that we need in order to hear him speak to us. Uh, we know he's not a shouter. The Bible tells us that he speaks in a still small voice, right? Like a whisper basically. Um, so he could be speaking to us more often than we think, and it's just too loud for us to hear. Um, in Ecclesiastes, it tells us, do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. Let your words be few. Uh, and the more time you carve out to sit in silence with Jesus, the more you'll hear from him and start to recognize his voice. Um, this is how we start to discern the will of God in our lives. And then... Uh, silence helps with clarity and decision making. So when you're trying to make a really important decision, at first it can feel really overwhelming. Like you have no idea what to do. And trust me, I feel like that 99% of the time. Like I struggle to trust myself and to know what the right thing to do is. And obviously like some big decisions do require research and, and asking the right questions and doing your homework before making any sort of uh, choice or decision. But I think like most of the time we know in our hearts what the right thing to do is. Um, and we have so much noise and distraction and then competing opinions, right? Of people on this side telling us to do one thing and people on the other uh, telling us to do something different that we can't tune into that part of us that is telling us what to do. So silence makes space for that as well. And then learning to control your tongue. Silence is great for that. James, uh, in the book of James in the New Testament, he tells us to be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry. And so in silence, we aren't able to use words to control people or manipulate people. In silence, we're, we're laying down that weapon of words and that's never a bad thing. Uh, and then preparing and recovering from life's challenges, right? So silence can prepare and strengthen your mind and spirit for the difficult things that are going to come. And it's also a place to rest and, and recover in the midst of the challenges that are currently happening in your life. And so, like in a battle, soldiers on the front lines only spend a certain, of certain amount of time in combat before they're moved back to the back. Um, to rest and regroup and when I was researching the benefits of silence I saw this quote and I loved it that said warriors cannot perform at their best if they are constantly enraged in the heat of conflict fatigue sets in bad decisions are made and the fighting force falls apart I think that's just a perfect illustration of what happens to us and why we need time right we need to move to like the back of the the fighting lines um, to rest and recover um, to stay balanced and to get our priorities in order and then to rethink our battle strategy, really. Uh, figure out what's working, what isn't. In Psalms, in uh, chapter 63, it speaks to this a little bit. It says, My soul wait in silence for God only, for my hope is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be shaken. So it's in that silence that our souls connect with Jesus. Uh, 
A silence also reminds us that the world and our families can still go on without us. And to my fellow control freaks out there, uh, this benefit alone, even if that's all we got from silence, I think it would be worth it. Amen? Amen. Okay, so if there are so many benefits to this silence thing, like why don't we do it? Why is it so hard for us to practice this? Um, I think boredom, like none of us really like to be bored. Uh, so if there's downtime, we fill it with something. It's music or TV or, or movies or um, just tech, picking up our phone and texting or games. Like games aren't a bad thing, but we're definitely using it to like fill, fill that downtime and that boredom. Um, another reason we don't like <laughs> silence is that we kind of are forced to face our own selves without any distraction, right? Uh, which is so dang hard for a lot of us. There are things about ourselves or our lives or our own mistakes um, that we don't want to take a look at because it feels really scary. And then I know for me, it feels like silence and alone time uh, are luxuries or privileges for like other people, right? It's for like retired people or people who make so much money that they just don't like have to stress, which is such a false perception. That's a whole nother thing. Everyone has stress and worry. Um, but to me, it feels like that is something that's just for like later in life. Um, and I don't get that, that luxury right now. Uh, I feel like I'm slacking off, right? If I have times of silence, I'm like, oh, I should be doing something or stressed out or fixing something. Um, does anyone else feel like that? Do you just feel like you don't deserve silence? Um, there are a ton of other reasons why silence is hard for us, but I want to end our time with just looking at practical and helpful ways that we can start incorporating and practicing silence in our own lives. Um, so find a space where you can be alone for an extended amount of time. Silence is best experienced and attained away from other people, even if it's just in another room. Like you don't have to like go up to the mountains or off the grid. Um, but another room or a bathroom or, or the closet, um, and then turn off all media, especially your phone, but like no TV or music, no phones and like no books, nothing to read. I learned this the hard way that once I opened my phone, even just to respond to like a quick text, the next thing I know it's been two hours and I've watched like 300 Instagram stories. So no, no phones, turn it all off. Uh, and then intentionally set aside specific time to be in silence. Um, you could do this by like just waking up 20 minutes earlier than everyone else wakes up. Or if you're a night owl like me, uh, try going to bed like 20 minutes after everyone else goes to bed. And don't check your phone first thing in the morning or scroll social media right before you fall asleep at night, but just try to like be silent. Just sit there in silence. Uh, for the mamas out there who probably don't get any, like that this sounds impossible and I totally, I totally can sympathize with that. Uh, the shower, like your daily shower might be your only <laughs> sacred sanctuary to get away from the kids. Um, so take advantage of that. And then if you're one of those strange people who likes to run, I don't get you, I don't like you. But try going on a run without music uh, or your phone. I'm sure it's going to feel weird and super boring at first, but it's an amazing opportunity to connect with God and outdoors and to just let your thoughts and ideas really thrive during that time. Uh, and then as we start to go back out into the world and we are driving more and, and we're going back to work, try commuting to work in silence. Even if you just do like 15 minutes of your drive in silence, that's 15 minutes of peace that you weren't really getting before. And I can tell you that it will feel super weird and awkward at first, like I guarantee it. Um, and you may be only be able to stand like five to 10 minutes of it at first and that's fine. Just do small steps. Um, but if you keep practicing it, I promise you, you will find such value and peace and int intimacy with Jesus in that. Um, use the time to just pray and reflect and let yourself be without agenda or expectations of what's going to happen in it. Jesus will meet you in that time. He will. And he may just sit with you at first, right? He may just like sit next to you and not say too much to you. He just wants to be with you. Um, but if you'll listen, you'll start to hear his still small voice in those moments. Um, 
So start small, share your experience with us. We want to know how it goes. I wanna hear how it goes, if it was a total fail, or if you actually like really experienced something um, new in that. So we love you guys. Uh, tune in tomorrow for another episode. Bye.